All right, ladies and gents, this is Top 10 Facts, The Elder Scrolls, by the channel Let Me Know. I know a thing or two about Elder Scrolls and lore of Elder Scrolls. Some, I must have some knowledge about this. Not all of them, but I'm gonna have good enough knowledge for most of it. The Kelly. Elder Scrolls, as you name them, they have often been used for prophecy. Yes, your prophecy comes from an Elder Scroll. Oh, the next was a character, all right. <laughs> the Elder Scrolls is an open-world action role-playing game series developed by Bethesda. The franchise began with the release of the Elder Scrolls Arena in 1994. Yeah. This was not only Bethesda's first attempt at an original concept, but also their first RPG. But it didn't start out that way. Initially, the game was simply known as Arena and was not to be an RPG at all. Instead, the player and a team of fighters would travel about the world fighting other teams in various arenas until the player became the grand champion. A sort of gladiator. This is the time, but let's be honest, games were not as mainstream and played by most people as they are right now they were mostly played by geeks especially rpg games because you know games back then were total crap let's be honest look at that look at the all the technology of this because i'm going to tell you one thing if i'm going to see a 60 70 year old car i'll be able to appreciate a lot of things about it like it would be like an art if I see 20 year old game, it will be just total crap. Let's be honest, it was just horrible. The technology was so bad, it was so starting technology that I think the 20 year old game and current game should not be compared. That's what I think, 2025 20, year old game. It was so horrible. So comparing Arena and Skyrim is just ridiculous. So, you know, look at the Arena's poster. You can see that they, you know, they were doing everything to make a sale. So, you know, yeah type of game. At some point during development, Bethesda decided to include side quests to bring some much needed variation to the gameplay. It wasn't long until they realized that the side quests were a lot more fun than the tournaments themselves. The gladiatorial gameplay was dropped altogether and Arena became a full-blown open-world role-playing game focusing on quests and dungeons. It was but there was a slight problem really big. with this decision. All material had already been printed Look using the, the name Arena. <laughs> Even the cover art for the game gave the impression that this is some sort of fighting game with an audience. They decided to add a title The Elder Scrolls with Arena as a subtitle to give it more of an Warrior RPG sounding name. When it was first released in 1994, it wasn't exactly a success with only a couple of thousand units sold. But as time went on, the game spread through word of mouth and eventually became popular enough to get a sequel two years later in 1996. The franchise slowly grew in popularity with each new installment and is today one of the most popular video game franchises out there. Grew biggest with the Morrowind. Open world RPGs are known to be quite expansive regarding both features and actual in-game world size. The Elder Scrolls II Daggerfall stands out from most of the games because of its ridiculous and some might say unnecessarily vast map size. It's just over 160. It was big but it wasn't as big as Arena, I mean come on. 60,000 square kilometers. To put that into some kind of perspective, that's almost the size of Florida in the US, or two thirds the size of the UK. I mean, if you think the world of Skyrim was huge, it's not even 0.03% of the size of Daggerfall. It would actually take real time come weeks come to get from one side of the map to the other. You can't really compare two games, man, come on. One is a handcrafted world, that is Skyrim. Other is procedurally generated crap looking game that was big. So what it was big? It was procedurally generated. What that means is, if you put two computers side by side, start it from the same point, go in the same direction, after some times, you're gonna reach a point where both game looks different because it's procedurally generated. You can't really compare that. Yeah, it was big, but it was, it was so bad. Look at that. 
But Daggerfall ain't got nothing on Arena though. Arena's map size is over 6 million square kilometers. As a comparison, Australia is roughly 7.5 million. It would likely take you several months trying to cross this world. Yeah, but look the at thing the is world. that almost all of this was done using procedural generation and not by hand. So while these games well, are not exactly man. comparable to their finely tuned and handcrafted modern relatives, it is nonetheless an impressive feat for games released two decades ago. When Bethesda worked on Oblivion, they considered adding children to the game to make things more realistic. But this proved to be a very difficult decision because if you could kill children in the game, it would no issue. doubt make for some extremely negative press. But if they made the children invincible, it would undermine the purpose of adding children in the first place, as it wouldn't be realistic. In the end, they decided to exclude children from the game completely. When development began on the next game, Skyrim, this dilemma was brought up once more and this time they decided to include children in the game, but as most of us know, they were made invincible. However, this decision was most likely made very late into development, because if you use console commands or mods that disables their invincibility, you can actually kill them. But what's interesting here, and possibly morbidly so, is that the children actually make unique noises upon death. Yeah, that's because even though I'm not saying that Bethesda wasn't as really popular when Skyrim came out, I'm just saying they weren't as mainstream as they are now or even was uh, five years ago. Because you think that fifth installment of the Elder Scrolls, in which Elder Scrolls 3 Morrowind was a humongous hit, Elder Scrolls 4 Oblivion was same humongous hit, so you think that three times in a row Elder Scrolls 5 is gonna have extremely hype behind it and it it had Skyrim was big but look at its you know announcement uh, wherever they did announcement of it look at the hype behind it it's not it's just like Todd Howard came out and just said here's Elder Scrolls and they just played Elder Scrolls and it was so low-key look at the Fallout 4's announcement reveal or whatever at the E3 how dramatic that was so 2011 to 2015, after Skyrim, things changed a lot. So while making Skyrim, Bethesda wasn't as mainstream as they are right now. So they knew that, you know, adding the element to kill, you know, that would cause an issue. But they still added everything after that, like sounds and every script and here and there. Because they knew that somebody is going to mod that and people are going to play that mod. You can't expect things like that in the future because how mainstream they are right now. Elder Scrolls 6 won't have details like that. I can guarantee you that. There are so many details in Skyrim and other Elder Scrolls that you, are, you can't expect in Elder, Elder Scrolls 6. Even if it's really good. Best Elder Scrolls of all time, Elder Scrolls 6, when it will come in 2080 or something. 50 years from now. Whatever details that is going to have, lots of details are going to be missing from the past installments, I can guarantee you that. This could mean that Bethesda planned for this to happen at some point during development. Furthermore, if the player kills Braith, then Lars Battleborn, yeah, who was yeah. bullied by Braith, will thank you for doing so. I don't know what you did, but Braith won't even look at me now, so thanks! This is even though killing her would of course be impossible. It's not necessarily killing her, it's just, you know, I guess hitting also applies. So it's not really killing script, because it doesn't acknowledge her being killed. ...possible during normal gameplay, suggesting that this was at one point a feature in the game. In no, many it wasn't Elder a Scrolls feature, like I said, they just added it because they knew people are going to mod it. Unlike other developers, Bethesda acknowledges that there are such things as modders, they see what they mod, they, they've seen what they mod in Oblivion, they've seen what they mod in Morrowind. So they knew what, what are people going to do and what to expect, and they crafted the entire game behind it. So there are lots of things that you can mod that's not in the, like, you know, you can't go past the invisible line, like you can't cross this area, there's a thing, like it's end of the map. And yet, if you use console commands and go behind that, you could see the ob uh, Oblivions, what is uh, uh, the Imperial City, 
the tower of imperial city you could see that but you couldn't see that without console commands or mods but the you know developers still put that in same thing about you know that uh, volcano from morrowind you can see that with the you know console commands and mods but uh, normally in uh, normal untouched game you can't so you know developers know people are going to use mods console commands and create game around that that's the best thing about uh, bethesda game studios games you will find subtle references to fish sticks for example in morrowind there's this book <laughs> called South captain's Park. guide to the fishy stick in Oblivion, Maik the Liar has this to say. Maik wishes the had exit may not a fish is to give to you. Sadly, it is as not. If you approach Sheogorath in Skyrim, he also mentions fish sticks. Do you mind? I'm busy doing the fish stick. It's a very delicate state of mind. This all began back in 2001 on the official forums when a user started rewarding others with an image of a pirate holding a fish or in this case fishy stick. This practice soon spread outside of the website and grew to become a quite popular meme and even continues to this day as a sort of greeting when welcoming new users to the forums. Bethesda took note of this and liked it so much that they decided to include fishy sticks in their games ever since. If you find Park, yourself at this location on the map in Skyrim, you'll find a stone bridge near a waterfall. If it's your first time crossing the bridge, you'll witness two goats walking across it. Soon after, a third goat climbs up from under the bridge and joins them. This is a reference to a popular Norwegian fairy tale called Three Billy Goats Gruff, about three goats trying to cross a bridge with a fearsome troll trying to eat them as they pass by. In the fairy tale, the goats manage to defeat the evil troll, and if you take a look underneath the bridge in Skyrim, you'll find a dead troll. Oh god. I didn't know about that detail, but so many things like that are in the game. Who would you expect that developers would put that in? And look at that. There are lots of great games, but let be, let's be honest. Nobody adds detail like BGS do. In The Elder Scrolls III Morrowind, there's an extremely well-hidden sword named Elton Brand that can only be acquired if the player performs a very specific set of actions. First of all, you need the sword Goldbrand. You must then complete the quest Shashev's Key and then talk to Sir Lonewe. Before doing so, make sure you also have exactly 11,171 gold coins in your inventory. If everything was done correctly, a message will appear saying Go to Hell Carolina, and your Goldbrand has been replaced with the Elton Brand sword. The reason behind this elaborate easter egg is just as elaborate. The name of the sword is a reference to Elton Brand, an NBA basketball player who once played for the Duke Blue Devils. This is because a designer at Bethesda named Mark Nelson was a big fan of the team and his username Blue Dev is a reflection of this. In fact, the script that triggers this easter egg is called Blue Script. The message itself is referencing the North Carolina Tar Heels, the Duke's most hated rivals. The quest <laughs> Shashev's Key is referencing the Blue Devils coach named Mike Shashevsky. Shashev's Key, Shashevsky. And finally, the very specific number of gold coins is a reference to Mark Nelson's date of birth. <laughs> If you open the console in Skyrim and type COC Windhelm Pit Entrance, oh, yeah. you will access a place known as the Windhelm Pit. Pit this fight. small arena of sorts was cut from the game for unknown reasons, but was to be used to get out of prison in Windhelm. To be released from prison... There are the lots of things in this game that were cut off when you really know about it. You like... I mean, the game is so vast and so many details in it. Why did they need to cut it off? They could have just left it in and have another feature of it, like there. This is a Windhelm pit fighting. Knowing Windhelm, why can't it have a pit fighting arena? It would be awesome, man. They didn't need to cut out these details. They made it, it's here, so why not put it in the game? They would have to fight various characters to gain his freedom. Back in early 2011, Bethesda announced on their blog that if anyone delivers a child on the day of Skyrim's release, 11.11.11, and then names him or her Dovakin, they would receive free Bethesda games for life. It's not entirely oh, clear if Bethesda were being serious, but when it comes to fans of video games, there's usually someone out there crazy enough to actually do it. 
Thus, a boy was conceived on 11-11-11 and named Dovakin Tom Kellermayer. And God. as promised, he and his parents will have free access to any past, present and future. That kid is gonna have horrible, you know, teenage years, school time. And in future gonna hate the, his parents. Thinking why, why would they name him like that? For a stupid game? Bethesda made games. During a quest in the Tribunal expansion for Morrowind, you're tasked with stopping a journalist from printing lies about the king. Once you track him down and talk to him, one of the dialogue options is I'm looking for the Eye of Argonia. This is a reference to the title of the second Elder Scrolls Adventures game that was cancelled before release. It was supposed to be a direct sequel to Redguard, but as Redguard sold poorly, they focused on Morrowind instead. The character in the game is supposed to serve as an analog for Bethesda and how they lied about an upcoming sequel to Redguard. <laughs> The lore in this franchise is vast. It's yeah. incredible how much thought has gone into- Oh my god, you cannot just come to the fact number 10 and just gonna talk about the lore. Let's just say there are certain channels in YouTube that specifically is for Elder Scrolls lore. They've been doing this for past 10 years and I highly doubt they're gonna be stopped doing it for next 10. That's how detailed the lore is. It all started in Elder Scrolls Morrowind, around the time of that development. Whatever lore the Elder Scrolls has, it started from the third installment, the Mo Morrowind. After the third game, the guy I think who created majority of the lore is no longer with the, you know, Bethesda Studios. But that guy helped create the lore and oh my god, that lore is so deep and so epic. You can't even scratch the surface of that lore just by playing the games, that's how deep it is. That's why Elder Scrolls Online exists. It's in a separate timeline, in separate era. And it's all... I don't know if it's canon or not, but the game is so big. They could create 100 Elder Scrolls and they, they would already have the basis of how to start that story. But Bethesda Game Studios are so morons and stupids. It's they would take 12 to 13 years at at minimum before the new Elder Scrolls comes. The last one was at 2011. The new one at best is going to be 2024. I mean that's like, are you kidding me? Elder Scrolls Skyrim is the you know is the scale is the benchmark with every other great RPG gets you know compared. Witcher 3 and Skyrim, it's not even the same in any sense of form and yet people still compare how Witcher 3 compares with the Skyrim. I mean, Skyrim was so good like that. I would have expected another Elder Scrolls by 2018 at best. 2019 after Fall of War, but no, they had to waste their time with Fallout 76 and now they are going to Starfield or something. And they're going to take time in there and after that they're going to bring Elder Scrolls. I mean, come on, man. Fallout is not their main flagship franchise. It's Elder Scrolls. And they're taking this long to it. Bethesda is going to go down a hole if they don't straighten their things out pretty fast. I mean, look at the Rockstar. GTA, Red Dead. GTA again, again Red Dead. I mean, GTA 5 was extremely good. Red Dead Redemption 2, I'm playing right now, is extremely good. Red Dead Redemption 1, I hear, was extremely good. So was GTA 4. What's wrong with going back and forth on the same thing? I'll... Skyrim was one of the best game I ever played. I couldn't wait for Elder Scrolls 6. And by the Elder Scrolls 6 comes, I'm going to be, what, 30 plus? That's ridiculous creating this universe and yeah by the way lore it's just awesome i know most about this lore and it's so big it took years for me to know about this lore elder scrolls lore reaching far beyond the scope of the games themselves each game takes place in one specific province on the continent known as tamriel the exception being the first game first game was the entire game skyrim was at skyrim cyrodiil was the oblivion and Morrowind was, you know, Morrowind, the third title. Arena, which actually lets you explore the entire continent, and the Elder Scrolls Online will eventually encompass all of Tamriel as well. 
but Tamriel is only one of the continents on the planet Nern. Yeah, now, there's a Kavir and there's lots of places. There are major continents. Oh god. Islands are Akav Yeah. Kavir, Atmora, Yukuda, Piandune, Thras, and possibly Aldmeris, if it exists. I think the people of Skyrim, the Nords, are supposedly came from Atmora. Very little is known of these other continents and islands, but Tamriel and Akavir are said to be the two largest. The planet Nern also has two moons called Secunda, Secunda and Masser, Masser yeah. which you've likely observed <laughs> during some late night adventures. Personally, I used to be an adventurer like you, but then I took an error. Masser is the larger <laughs> of the two, and Secunda is Had actually orbiting that. Masser and not Nern itself. Nern exists within the mortal plane known as Mundus. The Mundus was first conceived by a divine being known as Lorcan. But Lorcan could not create the Mike Mundus is the alone, Lorcan, let's so be honest. he either convinced or tricked other be. immortals known as Etada to assist him in its construction. Those who helped to create the Mundus became known as Aedra, meaning our ancestors. And those who did not became known as Daedra, yeah. meaning not our ancestors. Some of the Aedra gave parts of themselves entirely to the creation of the Mundus. I always thought that Daedras are like, like you know, devil, I don't know, bad people. And Aedras are good people. I always thought that when I played the game, when I learned the lore, I realized that it's not that good or bad. I mean, yes, some of them are bad, but it's not like that. Daedras just didn't care about creating this world. Aedra did. So Aedra create, helped create this world. But Aedras are also weaker because they created this world. There are lots of energy got wasted. But Daedras are untouched. They are really powerful. So sometimes, you know, there's a mistake of thinking that Aedras are powerful. Daedras are like devil and all the biblical term makes you think that Aedra must be powerful than Daedra. Light about darkness. But not. it's not like that. Daedras are much powerful. And not all Daedras are evil. Some of them are good. Most of them are kind of bad in a sense, but they are not really bad because they don't really care about you, they are bad. ...became the eight planets and moons, also known as the eight diviners. In very simple terms, think of the Mundus as something similar to a geocentric solar system, just with, you know, a lot of magical stuff. Yeah. Nern is the center with other eight bodies either orbiting around it or in close proximity. Beyond the mortal plane, we find Oblivion. This is the home to the supernatural entities known as Daedra, those who did not want to create the Mundus and thus continues to exist within the realm of Oblivion. The immortal See, Daedra and the Daedra... This Daedra right here, Azur. Sea is not really bad, right? So sea is, sea is an example that not all Daedras are bad. Princesses are both feared and worshipped by the mortals within Mundus, a theme commonly explored throughout the franchise. The mortals. Okay, Merus Dagon ca can be called bad, but you know, it's like calling fire bad or a lion bad because lion tries to kill you. He's really, you know, Prince of Destruction. It's, his, it's what he does. It's not really bad. I think. Only genuinely bad Daedra is Molok Bal. Every other is, I don't think it's not really bad in sense of term. On Nern cannot actually see or detect oblivion in any way. Instead, the realm is interpreted as the vast black nothingness of space. The only real indication that oblivion exists are the stars, including the sun. These are in fact not stars in the common sense, but rather holes that go straight through the realm of oblivion, reaching all the way to the realm of Aetherius. This realm is where the Aedra originates and is a sort of opposite of oblivion. Aetherius is a realm of pure magica and through the stars, or rather the holes, permit magic to reach the mortals on Nern. And that's a very, very compressed version of the lore Extremely behind the Elder Scrolls. Man oh man, I should stop watching Elder Scrolls videos because it makes me even more sad that it's gonna be years before another one arrives. And don't tell me to play Elder Scrolls Online, I hate that. I don't consider them canon, even if it is, I'm never going to consider that canon. Unless BGS makes it, it's not Elder Scrolls. <sighs> Alright, there were the 10 facts out of a million facts. There was top 10. Up to opinion, whatever. Alright, if you like my reaction, please don't forget to like and subscribe.